Hello, this is Goji here, and welcome to a new video. <laughs> Today, remember that video I did a while ago, like a couple months ago, before the reaction videos came out? Back in, I believe, March? I can't remember. <laughs> but remember that video I did a while ago, viewing the show era? Well, this time, I'll be reviewing the Heisei era. So, uh, let's get started, shall we? Starting with, by soundtrack term... The Return of Godzilla. Oh boy, this is gonna be okay. Let me run the audio a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let me just see what that. But what can we say about this film? It hasn't been said over before. It's obviously a true classic. It's definitely in my top ten most likely but it is so and you can tell by the 84 hat that i love this film <laughs> yeah got to get the 84 hat this is legit my only 84 match <laughs> but this film is so good i think this is one of my most watched godzilla films and i hate to say uh, one of them i will man at the American version, it's actually one of the few, few versions that I'll actually be watched of an American dub. Because I know people don't like the American dub because of the Dr. Pepper merchandise, merchandise in the American scenes. But the only reason why I say we watch, take a look at it, is because of the ending. The ending of that film. Oh my god, it gives me chills. Like legit, the ending of. Godzilla walking towards the volcano and him just screaming just falls into the volcano and you hear a horrifying scream that gives you nightmares. That is just terrifying. Granted, the 84 version, I wish I was kind of hoping the 84 version kept that a little bit. But eh, I'll get what I get. I was kind of hoping they would have kept that. I was kind of hoping they would keep that. Yeah, I was really hoping they would keep that in the 84 version. But uh, I guess. But I guess not. I guess we can't all get what we want. Like I With that said, this film is easy. One of the best in the franchise. It's easily regarded as being the best Godzilla film. And deserves that many reasons. And it's a decent start to the Heisei era, actually. I think it's pretty dark and one of the most darkest films in the franchise. Minus two Godzilla vs. Destroyer and <laughs> Godzilla 1954 being the darkest. But yeah, it does have a lot of dark moments, and I will admit that the funny part of this movie is when the comedic relief comes in. <laughs> I love him better in the American dub than the, the American, the women release than the American dub because it kind of sounds goofy. But for the American dub, it is a pretty good one. I will admit that the American dub is actually pretty good, and I really enjoyed this film and how dark it is but that said this film is honestly one of the best in the Hayes era easily one of the best in the Hayes era 
Like, come on. There's no beating this. There's just no beating this film of how magnificent it is. Of how perfect this film is. But with that said, let's move on to the next one. Let me just find the perfect soundtrack to it. And you all know what I'm about to play. The perfect soundtrack. I have to find a metal cover, but so I don't get caught by cramp. Yeah, I guess that was Bailante. Oh, this film. Oh, by the way, the previous film I probably give like a nine out of ten. Solid film, nine out of ten. This film also nine out of ten. A lot of these hazy films only get nine out of ten. This film is easily one of the best. And oh my god, this film! It's not. If you're spending a lot of kaiju fans, you're not gonna get in this film. I think later, I think in the next film, you get a better kaiju fight. Mostly with Katsa and Kimidor. Maybe not the final battle, but the first battle they have, it's pretty entertaining. But this, oh boy. Brutal as fuck. It is the most brutal battle. And I love Bailante in this movie. Like, her design alone is so amazing. This is easy one of the best suits they've ever done. Like, it takes, like, 25 people just to move this suit. And the amount of wires that it takes just to get this suit moving is incredible. And the soy itself is actually pretty good. It's one of the unique soys in the Godzilla franchise of... Erica, the daughter of Erica, being spliced into a rose, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And the movie is overall fun and enjoyment. It's non-stop action. It is so cool of how interesting this movie is. And how it, it's a good follow-up to a five-year, between the five-year gap of Godzilla 1984. And the Godzilla suit is the best it's ever been. Easily one of his best looking designs. Easily the best looking Godzilla ever. This is what implemented the best Godzilla suit. Easily. Best Godzilla suit ever made. I think my boy Final Logic. But this is easy to peak Godzilla suits. And characters in this movie are pretty good. And me. And Mickey's in the juice. Doesn't really get to do much, mostly due to this being the first movie. But you can say. But this is a pretty good. This this is one of the best films out there. I highly recommend you go check out this film. This film is it's it's creme de la creme. Like I said, give it a 9 out of 10. Easy the best film out there. I just love this film. And just listen to the goddamn soundtrack alone. It gives you the moment of awesomeness. This easy has one of the coolest soundtracks out there. Like, come on, listen to the soundtrack. Especially Bio Wars. Oh my god, I love the Bio. Easy the best soundtrack out there. <laughs> you can hear me too now the Bio Wars. I can listen to that soundtrack all day. This is easy. It, I can say that this is one of the best soundtracks.
easy one of the best soundtracks out there. And my favorite, this is easy. Also, another one of my most rewatched guts of films. I think a lot of the, I think like most, like half the Heisei eras, I rewatch a lot. With the section of the Nets too. Oh boy, I'm gonna get a lot of criticism on the Nets, on the Nets one. Yep, a lot and a lot of criticism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gonna get a lot, a lot of criticism on the next one. Ooh boy. Oh boy, I, the amount of hate I'm gonna get for this one is um, pretty divisive. Pretty, pretty divisive. Cold War, with that said, um, I'm not a big fan of Gods of a King of Dora. I'm just not. Maybe it's mostly due to the fact that I've only seen the dub. I have not, I've yet seen the sub. Maybe if someone manages to give me the freaking Gods of a King of Dora and Gods of a Mafia Bouvet, I'll probably watch it. But no, there's no way that's ever going to happen. But this film. Ugh. I'm sorry. It's just a big letdown from the last film. Like, you can understand the time travel. I can understand the criticism against people saying, oh, you just don't like the time travel. No, that's not it. They are literally legit repeating a lot of the same shots from the previous film. That's no joke. With Godzilla, the Godzilla scenes, they're legit repeating a lot of the same shots just at a different angle. I'm not kidding. Like the city destruction scene, that's my least favorite scene in this movie because they're just repeating at night. They're legit just repeating the same shot from Godzilla vs. Bailante of him walking down the city. It's legit the same shot, just at a different angle, added with Maze of Tanks. They're legit repeating the same shot, same sets. Like, it's no one noticed that. And actually, speaking of the city, the city looks a lot similar to Osaka from the previous movie. And this is supposed to take place in Tokyo. If it's taking place in Tokyo, why are most of the buildings reused from the Osaka? Ah, fuck it. And the characters are not very interesting at all. I just don't. The main lead is just boring as hell. He is frustrating of how dumb he is. I'm just not a big fan of this guy. This guy is a living hell out of me. He is not. And soundtrack, like I said, soundtrack always nails it. Even for like the worst guys of the movies, except for guys of those revenge. Even for like the worst. I think that's Kong. No, that's, that's Kong. GVK. Even for the worst Godzilla movies, the soundtrack always kills it. Like, this soundtrack, pretty good. But the story just doesn't work. The movie itself is average at best. Actually, no, not even average. I just really don't like this one. I'm sorry. I don't understand the love for this movie. Is it mostly due to the time travel part? Because if that's the reason, the time travel part is not really that complicated. Yeah, the time travel part is not complicated whatsoever. Like, any a five-year-old can figure out this time travel part. Like, what's so complicated about this time travel part? And because of those origins revealed in this film, are 
the only good part that I like about this movie. And let's get to the main factor. King Ghidorah himself. For a movie that has been hyped up that we haven't had a solo in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Been hyped up. And they actually fight Godzilla Kids' ass. And I will admit, when I see these two monsters fight, it is pretty deep. Pretty cool. It's a pretty even match. These are both monsters you want to see fight. It has nothing to do with the monster fights. Or the monster fights are pretty good in this film. It's just the city destruction scenes and the human story that ruined the film for me. I'm sorry, I'm not a big fan of this film. I just don't like this film whatsoever. I don't understand the love for this film. I don't get it. It could be just me. It could just be due to the fact that I've only seen the dub. I have never seen the sub. If I was to watch the sub, my opinion might change. But unless someone gives me the Blu-ray, I'm not watching the sub. There's no way in heck that I'll be watching the sub. I'm not going to go search on the internet just to find a private copy of this. It's probably available on the internet archive, so I might have to watch it. But I've only seen the dub. It's mostly due to the dub that I've watched that I hate this film. But I'm not a big fan of this film. This film is just bad. I don't like this film. I'm... I'm gonna be generous and give this a six out of ten. That's the best. That's a generous review. That's a, that's me being generous for this film. A six out of ten. That's I will be generous and give it a six out of ten. But I am not a fan. Of this film. Not whatsoever. It's a six out of ten, leading to a five point five out of ten. Yeah, it. I'm not a big fan of this film. Like. It's just no. It's far from the worst. I'll give it that, but my opinion might have changed. It might be a little bit higher than I last put it on my ranking list, but it's nowhere near good. Oh boy! With that said, that's yeah. Oh my God, I really hate that film. I just don't understand the love for that film. I just don't. Uh, let's hope the next one's not bad. Like, what could go wrong with the next one? Like, what could go wrong? There's nothing wrong with the next one, right? Right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no. Oh no. This one. This goddamn film. This. Oh no. Martha's film. Oh no. Godzilla vs. Martha, Battle for Earth. Great. Also, I know that's not one of the international titles or any of the titles for this film, but Godzilla vs. Martha, Battle for Earth. I know that's probably the American title. Actually, it's not even a title. I think it's one of the international titles or one of the titles for the film. <laughs> Most, but the fan base is causing Godzilla vs. Mafia Battle for Earth to differentiate it from Mafia vs. Godzilla. Nice sport, I'm just gonna call it that. Godzilla vs. Mafia Battle for Earth has one been put to It's probably F tier, F, F, just F, pull bad. The worst Mafia film ever made. Easy the worst Mafia film ever made. Easy the weakest film in the Hayes era. And I thought Godzilla vs. King of Thor was bad. This one's even worse. Oh my god, what the wrong? This film is just so boring. I just don't love this film. This film is just just no. Just no. Like ugh. 
this film is just bad. It's just terrible. I don't like this film. I no. This film is just the only thing that saves this film is like Goji fan said years ago, Batra. Batra is the only thing that saves this film from being in the Things that Batra does in this film is pretty sweet. And the final battle it is a pretty good battle. Even though it's mostly beam wars, is pretty much where the beam wars started. But <laughs> yeah, it's really not interesting. Also, should probably talk about the previous two battles. Because if it's by Lante, easy, good fight. I think I already talked about it because of his skin Boa's battles being good. But this film, yeah, it just doesn't do it for me. This film is so bad. I will never watch this film. I mostly do the fact that I've, again, only seen the dub. The dub is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> the dub is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God the next three films will turn out to have a better dub. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God the next three films have a better dub. Oh my God. I can't take any more of these bad dubs. <sighs> Even Godzilla vs. Space Castle has a better dub than these two. <laughs> yeah. But this film is just terrible. It's the worst. And honestly, I think this is probably the worst dub ever made. <laughs> one, of, maybe not the worst. That's going a little bit too far. But this is probably one of the. Okay, when we phrase that, uh, one of the lower end dubs of the Godzilla film. And the film itself, the story is not an interesting. It's basically Godzilla meets Indiana Jones. Nothing really to do with Mafia, just because it meets Indiana Jones. That's basically what this means. It's basically a Mafia movie with Batra starring Godzilla. Godzilla doesn't even need to be in this movie. He barely does anything. He's only there just for Mafia and Batra to team up. Legit put it to GVK before GVK came out. Legit did Godzilla and Kong teaming up against Mecha Godzilla, but in this case is Mafia the Batra teaming up against Godzilla. Hmm. They predicted GVK before it came out. Eh. <laughs> I know this technically even though this those different monsters, come on, the scenario is pretty similar. Come on. Come on. <laughs> but it's also the last film in the Hayes era where Godzilla is now a villain from start to finish. Yeah, this is the last film, and it's kind of a big letdown that this is the last film that Godzilla is bad. Like, seriously? Oh, God, no. Uh, I'm sorry. This movie deserves 3 out of 10. It's the worst film in the franchise. Honestly, one of the worst. Just move. This film deserves to be on the Worst guys of those lists. It's easily F tier for me. F F. Deserves a big fat F. Also, next three films that are up, I actually like. I'm not gonna like. Even guys of space guys, I like. That's no joke. I actually do. I actually find myself liking that film more. <laughs> yeah, that's no joke. I actually like that film more. That said, let's move on. All right. Yeah, the Junior Saga, the final three films in the Hayes era. I do love calling it the Junior Saga because Junior is basically in these three films. The next film, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Oh boy. Three films in a row where they recycle monsters. Oh yeah, let me change the soundtrack. And let's kick it with uh, Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla soundtrack. Oh, we gotta hear that theme. Give me a sec. I wish Streamhorn had a pause button on here. I can hear that for like an hour. That's no joke. I can hear that for an hour. Happy day. 
the first thing it gives me. That. The first thing it gives me is a fucking ad. Yeah. Oh boy, the Godzilla vs. Megan. Pow, 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 pow. Pow, 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 pow. What a way to start a Godzilla film. That opening montage is easily the best, one of the best openings. And this film just got me hyped with that opening. Like, this film is so interesting. Easy. One of my movies. It's easy. My most watched Heisei film in the Heisei era. Not including Godzilla vs. Shura. This is easy. My number two of the most watched Heisei film. Like this film is so good. Actually, no, it's actually my most rewatched Heisei film. Like this film is so goddamn good from start to finish. It is fun. This is easy. One of the best Mechagodzilla films out there. Not including Godzilla X Mechagodzilla or Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, but this film. Ooh. <laughs> Oh boy, it's so good. It is, it's, it's creme de la creme. It's magnificent. It is one of the best Mechagodzilla films out there, and I absolutely love it. That's it. This film, the Academy Award, best Mechagodzilla film out there. Even though the only problem I have with this film is Mechagodzilla himself. Not what Mechagodzilla does and what he does. It's mostly to do with his design. Design looks kind of goofy. Kind, of, you expect this to be the thing of G Force. Well, I would expect them to look intimidating and like a main threat. Like the poster Mechagodzilla of what we see looks a lot better than what we get in the movie. Like this film does not look. The Monka Godzilla in the film, I will agree, is one of my least, but to be honest, I think it's in my top three Mecha Godzillas compared to the recent Mecha Godzillas that we got in. <laughs> compared to the recent Mecha Godzillas we got in, yeah, I think this is my top three. <laughs> Compare, he's way better than Mecha Godzilla. F- he's, he's way better than Mecha Godzilla from Ready Player One. He's way better than Mecha Godzilla from definitely way better than Mecha Godzilla. F- um, city on the edge of battle. If I had to rate these Mega Godzilla, it would probably be number seven, City on the edge of battle. Mega Godzilla from um, Ready Player One, Mega Godzilla, GVK Mega Godzilla, Mega Godzilla Two, Mega Godzilla. Wait, Cyber does Cyber Godzilla count as Mega Godzilla? Yeah, I'm killing Cyber Godzilla. Cyber Godzilla, Mobozilla. Oh, not Mobozilla. Mobozilla, Cyberzilla, Mechazilla 1, Mechazilla. Actually, yeah, Mechazilla 1. Actually, now thinking about it, this is my second favorite. Now thinking about it, this probably is my second favorite Mechazilla. I actually like this one more than the show about Mechazilla, to be honest. Mostly it has to do with its theme. Well, it. Well, between the first Mechazilla and the show. And this Mechagodzilla, they switch back and forth for which one's my second favorite. Like, they both switch back and forth. I know the design is not good for Mechagodzilla, but the stuff he does is pretty good. And the design for Mechagodzilla in the first film, that yeah, this is easy, a new take that I like on this Mechagodzilla. This Mechagodzilla is so good. Even though I will admit the main character, whatever, the Tyrannicon guy, not very interesting when it comes to main character. I don't even consider him the main character, to be honest. He doesn't give me off like main character vibes. I think I, I think the main character I would say is the actual main character of this film is to be honest Asuza. Yeah, uh, that's no joke. I think Asuza is the main character of this film. 
and Mickey herself, this is the best role Mickey's ever had. Like, she contemplates on destroying Godzilla, and she has to choose from killing him or letting him live, which means drama. And this is easy, one of the best films. It's very entertaining, and I will be watched this from day and day. I, just give it like 9 out of 10 for me. It got a 9.5 out of 10, to be honest. Easy, the second best Heisei film. Well, I mean, that's. Mm, not sure which. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give it. To, I'm going to give Nico the L. I'm going to give. Not the L. going to give Nico the W and say, yeah, this is easy. As I'm in the midst of a plot. Easy, one of the best. Right now, wish me luck. Grammarly has again. Easy one of the better, easy one of the best Mega Godzilla films. Easy, but Shadow of a Doubt is the best Mega Godzilla film. Been a lifesaver with my application and helping me. Write easy, the best Mega Godzilla film out there. I love this film to death. I will continue to love this film to death. Love this film to the end of time. Easy, one of my favorite films. I will rewatch this film day and day. It's just so entertaining. I just love this film to death. I think this is, honestly, to God, not only the most rewatched Heisei film, it's my most rewatched Godzilla film in general, right next to Godzilla Final Wars. Like, this is legit my most rewatched. I wouldn't say it's in the top five, to be honest, but it's very close. And just listen to that thing. No, seriously, just listen to it. Easy, best Mechagazza film ever. Yeah, I wouldn't, but that would be kind of complicated because this would this be the best Mechagazza film? Hmm. I think we watch again Mechagazza because I am be watching it right now. Be watching it right I already finished the hate. Actually, no, I haven't been watching both of these things a lot. <laughs> so. Let's get on to the next film. Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Oh boy, got some of space cuts off. To be honest, I love this film more than got some of King of the Web. I think it's better. <laughs> it maybe it's actually probably I'll probably give it the same rating as Godzilla King of the Web. It's at 
maybe just a little bit higher, probably like a 6.5 out of 10. It's just a little bit better than Godzilla vs. King of the War, but I do love this film. It's a very average film. It's pretty good, and it's pretty entertaining. And it is a very good first if you want to get Godzilla people into Godzilla film. It has a lot of the tropes that most Godzilla films have. It's pretty interesting. Alien Invasion. Monsters. Want to take over the world. As most of the intro. Even though technically Space Cousin is not an alien, he's technically a mutant made in space. But I don't know. That's quite confusing on because uh, on the thing when they legit say Space Cousin is an alien, but it's not an alien, but a mutant, which is a bit confusing because he came from space. Huh. Weird. But this film, I, to be honest, I enjoy it better. And Godzilla vs. King of the War. And it's a very underrated Godzilla film. I don't think it deserves that much hate, to be honest. I'll probably rate it a little bit better. Just by 0.5 above Godzilla vs. King of the War, to be honest. I think it's a little bit better than Godzilla vs. King of the War. Most because the villain's a lot more interesting. Also, Space Godzilla really not really a good a name for a monster, to be honest. And I love this Space Godzilla, and he just wants to destroy the world. And I know I said back in like no October that I said I didn't love this film, but my my, my opinions have changed. I've changed since then. I've rewatched this film. And yeah, my opinion changed. It's a lot better than I thought. A lot, a lot better. And to be honest, it's very good. I would probably rate this 6.5 out of 10. Easy, one of the best. One of the best films in the Heisei era. And you can also tell they were kind of running out of ideas, like many people have said. But it's a decent movie. Pretty average. Something months I can say about it. It's a pretty average, pretty average film. But I do love it more than Godzilla. Maybe above average, but it's a lot better than Godzilla vs. King of the World, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that, saying this film's better than Godzilla vs. King of the World, but eh. Eh, sue me. <laughs> anyway, next. Oh, we write to the big boy himself. The final film that he said. The trilogy of final films. But, quote, pentology. Yeah, pentology of final films in the Heisei era. In films that should have Heise ended. Oh boy. This is going to make me... Ah, this movie is... Easy. Uh, one of the best films in the Hayes era. It's so sad and tragic. And it's easily the darkest one in the Hayes era since 84. It's kind of fitting that they ended on a dark note and on a simple note. And this is easily the best film in the Heisei era. One of the best films in the Heisei era. And it ends the Heisei era perfectly. Like, it ends it perfectly. If this was the final Godzilla movie ever made, to be honest, I would be satisfied. But is it the best final Godzilla movie? My opinion, I don't know. I think it's the Final Wars. I love it more. It's, just, it's kind of both 
iffy, iffy between those two. Like those two are really good final movies. But this film is easy. If this was the first movie ever made, it would have ended perfectly. This would have ended the franchise perfectly. But it's like, but then that film happened. Oh boy, that film. That piece of garbage that we do not speak of. The film I walked out of G Fest for that we do not speak of. There's no joke, I actually walked out of G Fest during the screening. <laughs> but, oh, I do not love that film. But this film is easily the best film ever made. Because it was sure easy and adventurous, perfectly. Honestly, 9.9 out of 10. 9.9 out of 10. One of the best films. Actually, no, maybe is that. 9.6 out of 10. Easily one of the best films in the franchise. I love this film so much. It's so sad. And every time you hear the vacuum theme, it's so tragic. I just love this film to death. With that said, best film ever made. Well, not the best film. Yeah, no, was. This is easy. The best AC film in the entire. It deserves the ranking of the second highest scoring AC film. Deserves that. And and they went out with a bang. They went out with a bang. This, to me, this is my equivalent to Infinity War or Endgame. This is the Godzilla Endgame for me. This, I know it's a bit kind of over dramatic, but no joke. This is the end. This is legit my equivalent to the Avengers Endgame. That's legit, no joke. I love this film. This film is so good. It's so good. It's. I love this film so much. It's just a masterpiece in every single way and form. Easy one of the best films. I would not. I would give this fails. It's also another one of my most best films out there. How oh, that said, the Zanagoji sign off. And remember, stay big, G fans. <laughs>